there. I was personally guilty of trying to, uh, I guess, put our case forward uh, this week only because I had to, because I had to, had to respond. Um, it's probably not the forum to talk about it, but the NRL has got to make a decision on uh, whether they're going to allow coaches to um, deliberately manipulate uh, referees and try and influence them. I didn't start the conversation publicly. I said nothing publicly. This happened three weeks ago. I sent some information to the referees for clarification. So I wasn't going public with anything until until Penrith started to come out and they started the, the public statements and I just responded to those. I wasn't going to sit back and not I wasn't going to sit back and not um, not stand up for my team and the players. I think the game could do itself a favour and come down on any, any coach who wants to try and deliberately uh, influence a match official before a game. Well, well, I couldn't agree with him more on that, but that's why I didn't say anything. I never said anything for three weeks. We played him three weeks ago. He was the one that's come out and started mouthing off. So just get that in, in, in his right perspective. So if he's critical, he's critical of himself. Coaches do it because they can. You know? We get fined afterwards, uh, but pre-game, um, yeah. You can, it's pretty much open slather, I think, so, um, you know, we were, our boys were certainly being spoken to on the run for a, a stuff that we never get done for. Matt, inside 40 and clear. Matt, don't change your line. So, I'd suggest that, um, yeah, that type of thing has an influence. There's no public manipulation. I, I, I saw a, a, an incident in a game that I didn't like. OK? And surely it's my right to, to ask the referees what their interpretation of that is. That's what I did. That's process. Now, if that's manipulating the game, you're all kidding yourselves. Well, that's manipulating nobody. And if the referees can't handle that, and I'm sure they can, because I'm sure I'm not the only coach ever, has ever questioned some of their, their decision-making. And that's what they're there for. But, you know, keep it in-house. I, I didn't put it out, out, out on the front pages. I never said a word. Three weeks ago, I did it. Three weeks. Well, has he been sanctioned for it? No, so, no, he's allowed to do, If you allow it to happen, it will happen. Yeah, so, that's up to the NRL. If, if they don't care, that's fine. Like, uh, you know, it's good clickbait and all that kind of thing, but um, I think it's terribly unfair on referees um, that they, you know, that, that we're able to do that to them. Ivan even said that he thinks they shouldn't be out. Coaches have too much influence to ring up and, and question every decision. And, and Well, they do it. Yeah, he said we all do, and we should have that right. I, I, that's, you can't take that away from us. But the public comment, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that. But as I said, I didn't start this one. Who did? <laughs> well, Ivan did, because he came out... But then who, 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 why did it leak? You know, well, he worked for him. He worked for the referees before he went back into coaching. I've got to assume he's got some mates there still. Oh, I swear to God, I nearly fell off the chair watching that on Saturday night. Explosive claims in the post-match press conferences between Ivan Cleary and Wayne Bennett. The language they were using, manipulation, illegal blockers, clickbait, running his mouth off. He's got mates in the referees. It was just, it was just one of the most theatrical and dramatic <laughs> exchanges we have seen in a long, long time in this game. It's what you want to see in the finals, guys, <laughs> isn't it? You want to see an explosion. You want to see a new feud. You want to see the super coach who every spring turns up, wins footy games, confident, cocky, laughing almost in that. And then you've got the other guy who was rattled. Don't worry about the chocolate soldiers buzz. Mm -hmm. Ivan ended up being a chocolate teapot out of this exchange. Yeah. He wanted to jump in the ring with Clint Eastwood and he got his receipt. Not only did they win the game, he won the pre-game build-up and then he wiped the floor in the press conferences after the game. So Bennett is adamant that Ivan started it. Do you agree? Absolutely. No. Ivan picked the telephone up last Thursday and rang journalists. He's got friends in the media and he decided that he wanted to plant the seed. Do you know who anyone he spoke to? Do I you do. know who he yeah, called? He yeah, called. I do, yes. So he wanted to plant the seed, right, that Nathan was being unfairly and illegally targeted. South Sydney return serve. But you know, guys, this has been going on forever. Coaches trying to get a 1%, 2%. Prior to a game, and I don't want to bore you, but I'll take you back to Anzac Day in the 80s. I interviewed South versus Canterbury at the cricket ground. I interviewed George Piggins before the game. And you know what he said? He said, I'm worried about Kelly. He'll will try, Peter Kelly, he'll try and take out someone. And then what happened? That first tackle, 
He it's belted fatal. Ross Harrington and he beat the bugler off. He was sent yeah. off, <laughs> right? And Warren Ryan blew up Deluxe after the game in exactly the same manner as Ivan Cleary did. What I find fascinating about this exchange, Buzz, is Ivan's normally fairly mild-mannered and his side's been so successful over the course of the last couple of years. He hasn't had to wade into these types of mind games prior to big games previously. He's rolled the dice in this instance... Well, it worked. And he got... Uh, well, it he's been found out. But the, fa the fact is, look, we heard the referee there, Jerry Sutton, say to Matt Eisenhurst, on the ver first kick of the game, don't move, hold your line. So the mm. first kick of the game is into him, mm. OK? So the messaging there that about the Penrith blockers, OK, protecting Nathan, that got out. Well, that Wayne's got... confirmed that he yeah. went to the NRL three weeks well, prior after they played in the regular well, season. What's, what's, what's the difference then if it's public or it's not? If, as far as it comes to influencing referees. Why is, it, why is Wayne concerned that it got out, but not the fact that you could actually influence the referee? Why did Ivan Cleary go to the media and want to get it out? Well, or, or did and the then journalist who wrote it, it, who used to work at the NRL, get a tip from inside the NRL and then rang Ivan about it? But you can't have it both ways, Kenny. You can't leak it to the media in the first place... Assuming he and did. Then, Assuming and he then did. blow up when it backfires. Assu he did. Look, I, I actually thought... Ivan came into that press conference after the game. I thought he was naive. I thought the press conference is not about how you honestly feel. It's always about what public message you want to get out. He's pub he, he, sp he came in and, I believe, spoke honestly about the frustration of the whole process. He went down a rabbit hole. And then, and then made the mistake, his classic mistake, was he allowed Bennett... To come in the last second, word. exactly. <laughs> yeah, like seriously, the I, last, just rookie, last. it was a rookie error, a hundred percent. But, but yeah. Ivan, if, I reckon, if Wayne Bennett had sat down and watched Ivan Cleary's press conference and got it in a hole, rather than the the questions from the journos who just picked the little bits to go, and not no fault on the journos, but they picked the bits that that, that were the more salacious. If mm. Wayne had seen the whole press conference and put it in context. I think he would have been in 90% agreement with Ivan mm. rather than 10 or 20% of it is about. It came across as a gripe from a losing coach to me. And I think Ivan's body language said it all. And I think that's a really bad reflection on his players when the coach, who is their leader, looked like he was struggling with his just his demeanour. So Ivan did take responsibility and he, mm. he started by saying, I got this wrong, I shouldn't have been drawn into this, building up to tonight. Just back on that incident Again, you were talking about... the whole thing in, pre in, in context, Ivan, I thought, was close to the money. Yeah. Uh, Wayne was too. I disagree. He went Wayne. down a rabbit warren and got caught in a mm. cold. Is that, Kenty? Well, what's it's, that it's mean? It's embarrassing for him. You got... You... He, he, he went, he went right, he opened up, so he's just lost the game. His son hasn't lost the game all season. He goes in, they're supposed to be 80 minutes from the grand final. Instead, they've got to go into sudden death football. And he wants to get caught in a fire that he has started himself in the media during that, the week. That situation, that kicking situation, put Penrith right out of rhythm. The first kick of the game, which was the only game kick that... Uh, Blake Taft dropped, right? Only one he dropped. They're already getting warned on the run. So can I just walk us back? We've got some evidence that you're talking about. Bernie Sutton did warn Matt Eisenhuth early in the game about blocking Bunny's defenders from uh, uh, Nathan Cleary. Hold, go, go last, Matt. Matt. Inside, Inside 40, 40 and clear. Yeah. Matt, Matt, don't, don't change, change your line. Yeah. Matt, Matt, take up the position, Matt, don't, don't move. move. I did, I went forward. <laughs> Yep. All up. Shot clock on. To make sure you don't move sideways, mate, or go on. Saying take up a position, don't make a secondary movement. Hey? Yeah. That's Sutton there saying, Matt Eisenhuth, take a position, don't make a secondary move. I and mean, he was right. He was right. He did make a secondary move and he, he moved in to, to try and take out the, the kick chase, right? So the referee was right. So is that manipulating the referees? From whose point of from view? From a from coach, what? if you're talking about it well, what, what, prior to kick Okay, off. but I think if you're Penrith and you've sat there in the previous 24 hours, you've seen a big blow-up get created between your coach and your opposition coach, and they're arguing over whether the player is being illegally protected or not, the kicker, Nathan Cleary, and then very first kick, the referee's India, what, uh, clearly it's made an impact. Yep. Clearly it ha it's had an effect. And now what... Uh, what yeah. Penrith were incapable of doing after that 
was dealing with it and getting on with it. Because after that, they, their, their attack was off all night. But we don't know if it had an effect just because it was in the media on the back page. Every coach, every second or third week, rings Graham Annesley or rings the referees department and Buzz, points they out wouldn't, something. They wouldn't do it if they weren't having an impact. They wouldn't do it. If, but if they all do it. But of course they all do it. Some they all do it. So how do we cries. know they don't so react like they did just then? Because, look, I, that, well... We don't, do we? No. But what I'm saying is, every Origin series, we always get a coach, mm. one of the Origin coaches will always request a meeting with the referees before the game so for clarification. Mm. Always. Now, Wayne is not a regular complainer to the referees. He said he was in his mm. early days. No, he couldn't get enough yeah, he, of it. He's <laughs> not. He's not. Wayne, Wayne's not a complainer, OK? Wayne gets on with mm. it. But Ivan Cleary generally does too. Like, there are a couple of other clubs that are world-class at it, that are there every week with half a dozen clips every week that they want. Wayne's been there three, four times this year. Ivan's been there three, four times this year. That's it. They just want a clarification. Wayne hasn't been there since round 23. Mm. But Wayne got his way. Round 23 got its payback on the weekend. Do you think coaches have too much influence over decisions being made on the field? No. This no? is the way that it's been set up mm. for however many years. So Wayne didn't do anything different that all the other coaches in the game are also doing. It was... You know, it's smart coaching. But I spoke to Annesley today and he said to me, he said, look, referees react. And he said that in his, in his, his mm. weekly meeting. Referees react. They're, they're not taught to go out and carry the narrative from the papers onto the field. They react. But he did say to me, he said, there could be a subliminal effect. And it's, it's the old line, yeah, don't think about the pink elephant. Straight away you pink a bit. Mm. That's the first thing that comes in your brain. Don't think about the kick chase. First kick, he's into them. So there's no doubt it had an effect. Whether you want to say that the referees aren't uh, swayed by this, yeah. they, they clearly were. Yeah. They clearly were. Now, whether, you know, I don't think that's the whole not to reason for their that loss. No, it's not. The reality of that the as is. well, though, Kenty, is that Penrith were bending the rules a little bit. Of course they the were. The rule is that your blockers are only allowed to move directly forward, hold your line. Yeah. They've been moving to the side or they've been going backwards. To protect and how many teams Nathan. do that, James? Yeah, all of them, Phil. OK, right. so I haven't got a drama with it. But in this game, right, clearly the fact that Eisenhuth got a bake from the referee mm. in the opening exchanges, that got in Ivan's head. Mm. That aggravated him. See, what Ivan should have done was... See, what Wayne did, you got the pressure of South Sydney's game week, right? They've got no Latrell Mitchell. Everybody say you can't win without Latrell Mitchell. They've got the fact that the five previous meetings against Penrith, OK? So that could have been the narrative for the week. And then when this popped up, Wayne's gone beautiful. You know what? This is just take it all off us and put it on this and I'll, be, I'll get out front and I'll, I'll carry the conversation. We heard Benji last week on the show say, Wayne, we thought it was funny, all the rest of it. They, they've allowed... Wayne allowed that to happen. Ivan, unfortunately, and I think it's a, it's a coaching lesson for him, he was unable to take his team out of that situation. So kick one on the game, straight away it's in the player's heads. They've got to him. Let's not forget as well, Penrith actually started the mind games earlier in the week around Blake Taff and yeah. his selection. Yes. Yeah. We're not sure if he is going to play there. South Sydney are playing mind games. That's playing right into Wayne's sweet spot. He just sat back, went, OK, happy days. I'll pick the side. You'll see who runs out mm. Saturday night. And then this furor erupted. Well, this is the 30th year Wayne Bennett has coached a team into a finals appearance. Mm. It's an extraordinary record. There is no mm. trick that he has not seen and there is no... Mm. There's nothing that he is not able to swing and, mm. and you know, make the narrative <laughs> more favourable. And now South Sydney are in the box seat to become the first team mm. into the 2021 Grand Final, their second decider in 50 years. 